What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 2, Episode 19. <laughs> Excuse me. And essentially, this is the, um... This is the finale. Next week, they're doing, like, a behind-the-scenes, never-before-seen footage type situation. I guess because um, they didn't really do a reunion, maybe because of COVID, or maybe they just didn't want to bother with it. So, this is essentially the finale, but it played like a finale, to be honest with you. It played like a finale. So, we start this episode off. We have Melody and her family, well, her kids, and they're doing a photo shoot. If you paid attention to the Holt's home, it was full of pictures, and a lot of those pictures were her and Martell and the family, and Melody was like, listen, I don't want no bunch of pictures of Martell around my new home, and so, you know, this is me and my kids' first photo shoot without him, um, and it was an African theme, and it was nice, you know, it was what it was. Destiny came through to check, you know, to check on her, and, and see, you know, check, drop in on her, I didn't say check on her. And Melody let her know what happened the week before at um, Christopher and his wife's home, how that whole thing went. And, you know, Destiny was like, listen, I just don't get him. He tells me he wants his family back. He tells me he wants, you know, but then he does and says things that do the exact opposite. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And at the end of this episode, Melody says something very important. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to fast forward to the end, but she says something which explains a lot of Martell's actions throughout this episode and really throughout the season. She said, Martell wanted to be married and single at the same time. And I said, you know what? That's about right. He wanted to be single. He wanted that wife. He wanted that pretty family with the, with the, 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 the you know, the, the, the perfect, you know, the, you know what I'm saying? The mover and shaker. I've said this before, that whole mover and shaker thing. But then he wanted to be single to do his own thing. And he never felt like there should be a consequence for that. He should be able to do whatever he wanted to do. And there shouldn't be any consequences for that behavior. And ultimately, that's sort of what ended up catching up with him. So we see Martel go to see the counselor. Now, he hadn't been to see the counselor in a while. And... Counselor said, you know, you reached out to me a few times, and whenever I would reach back, you wouldn't follow up. And Martel was like, well, yeah, you know, but I'm here, you know, and I realized that I kind of need to talk to you, you know. So he tells him pretty much that I feel like it's the same conversation. But you do get a little bit of a revelation, and he said, I wasn't happy at home. Let's just let's just cut through all of the I wasn't she wasn't doing what I needed her to do in bed. Like it's that's it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. He wasn't happy at home. For whatever his reason was. And I don't think it was all about sexual acts he wasn't getting. He wasn't getting sex. And he's talked about this in the past before as well that Melody got so consumed with being successful and grinding and working that she was neglecting him. He said, I mean, she didn't even compliment me anymore. And you know, on one hand, it would be really easy for us to be like, really? Really? She didn't tell you you looked pretty? But don't women do that? I mean, he stopped complimenting me. He never told me I was pretty anymore. So, I mean, men need that same thing that women need. When Men want to feel good. Men want to feel validated. I'm not defending what he did and how he chose to handle it. But it wasn't just about, oh, she wouldn't give me head. Like, it was deeper than that, y'all. Um... And he said, basically, he went out and he found somebody else that did it. And yes, he wanted his family back. And yes, he wanted, you know, Melody back and wanted them in a good place. But he liked what he had found. And he started to, started developing feelings for her. And so it was hard for him to stay away because he liked it. He liked what he had found. And again, I think that goes back to Martel's defense when he says, well, it's not like I was sleeping around with four or five different women. I mean, it was just one other person, which, of course, is ridiculous. And we know it's ridiculous. But in his mind, it was, listen, I'm sort of torn between two women. I have feelings for them both. I love them both. But at the end of the day, my wife is going to always win because she's my wife and we have children together. And I think that was always the determining factor was she's my wife and we have children together. Um, and that is not to say that Melody was perfect. But it is to say that you, and again, this also fast forwards to the commercial, I mean, to the conversation at the end. It wasn't so much that Melody was perfect, Martel, 
It was the way in which you chose to handle it. And he even told Melody, and I know I keep going back to the end of the conversation, but to me, all of these things are connected. He even, she said, Martel, had you not cheated, I would have never left you. But then he said something deep to her. He said, but I would have left you because I wasn't happy. And so again, the way you chose to handle it, Martel, is the reason why you get the flack. And the fact that you won't accept that you're wrong in the way you handled it. But nobody is saying that you were wrong for feeling the way you felt and why you stepped out in the first place. The problem is how you handled it. Anyway. So then the counselor says to him, well, you know, as long as you keep playing around, you know there's a possibility that she could get pregnant. Then the asshole Martel comes out. He wants to get smart because what he doesn't want to do is admit that she is pregnant already. So, he, now, you know, so now we're getting the asshole Martel to talking around the whole conversation, Martel. And he finally, and the guy was like, listen, you're not answering my question. And Martel even, and I don't know if they edited it out, but Martel came, he stopped short of, well, I ain't come here for all of that. You heard him getting ready to go down that road, then he sort of stopped. And he finally just said, and the guy, you know, the counselor was like, but you're not answering the question. And he said, okay, okay, she pregnant. She already is pregnant. And you saw him visibly, t visibly take a step back, right? And he said, but you know what? This doesn't make you a bad guy. And what I don't want you to do is walk out of here with your head held down and for you to feel like, he said, because I'm not going to really beat you up about it. it. It is what it is and it happened. He said, but now what you have to do is you have to create a situation where you, your kids, all of your kids look at you and they love you and they have respect for you because you made a mistake and it happened. Like it, it, the, but the kid's not a mistake. Your actions were. And it doesn't automatically make you a bad person. Your actions were not great. But now the child is on the way. And what you have to do is secure your legacy with both of your, both sets of children. That's what you have to do. And I can appreciate the fact that he did that because I feel like that's what Martel was waiting for, was for the man to beat up on him. And he didn't. And he was right. I mean, it is what it is. The baby on the way now, like, the shit you did is the shit you did. You, I mean, from from all reports, she was pregnant before and didn't have the baby. So it's not like y'all didn't know what could happen. And it's not like y'all weren't y'all weren't faced with this before. So at the end of the day, this decision that you made, y'all got to deal with the consequences of it. But, but what you don't want to do, you don't want your kids to walk away going, my dad won't shit, right? So we see Martel, it's the soft opening for Black. Um, we see Martel on his way, and we get Arianne for the first time. Arianne is the other woman. We've been talking about her for three seasons, or how many seasons you want to ask. It's either, this either season two, part two, or season three, however you would choose to look at it. Um, but now we've always heard that she would never be on the show. And I guess we found a little bit of a loophole because we don't see her, but we sure hear her. And basically, <laughs> Martel wants a DNA test. Now, granted, she brought it up, but the minute she was, and she brought it up in a sarcastic way, was like, I mean, what you trying to say, Martel? I mean, you want a DNA test? He was like, well, I mean, sure. <laughs> it was like, since you bring it up. And he was like, but I didn't. She said, Martel, I was really being facetious. Like, I didn't. He said, well, I mean, you know, he said, well, you know, she's always been pretty loyal. Like, I don't really, but I just want to be 100% sure before we move forward because this is a game changer for everybody involved. And again, I can't be mad at him. I think, I think I ain't mad at you, Martel, for saying you need a DNA test. I'm just not. And she was like, well, I'm 1,000% sure. So it is what it is. I mean, so anyway, child. So Martel gets there, and when he gets there, the only people that are there, I believe, at this point, or at least the only people we really see, are Letitia and Marceau. And, you know, they, they speak and all, you know, dap each other up and everything. And Martel actually apologizes to Letitia. He said, listen, at the end of the day, no matter how upset I was or angry I was, that was still your mom, and I was wrong. I was wrong for how I talked to your mom, and, you know, it was disrespectful, and I apologize for that. I, I do. And Letitia was like, I like this new Marceau. I mean, he apologizing and stuff. Like, I like this dude. 
And so, you know, they have, you know, they, they're cool. And she accepts his apology and everything. And, you know, it is what it is. And then Destiny comes through. Listen, Destiny look cute, girl. Destiny, I like that outfit you had with your matching mask. But Willowberry, like, he ain't gonna come to this event either. Like, I understand. I feel like he chose to not film this season. And that's fine. I can respect that. But you ain't even come here. You ain't even come for this. So then we had Christopher and his wife show up and asshole Mar you know, you just never know which which Marcel you gonna get. I mean Martel you gonna get. So we got asshole Martel, where he basically was acting like he ain't say nothing wrong, do nothing wrong. And Christopher's wife was like, Listen, the the stuff that you said, if you had talked to me that way, yeah, I'd have threw a table at you. And he gave her a look like, What? Now, Letitia not even knowing what Marcel, what Martel said and not knowing the conversation, just talking about some. well, I understand. I mean, sometimes that's what you got to do. I mean, when people, uh, you know, you just, people can't handle the truth, you know, you just got to be honest. People just got to be honest and be honest. I was like, girl, you don't even know what the fuck is the problem. You don't know the conversation. You don't know the problem. You don't know what was said. Go sit down, Letitia. Melody shows up with Marcus. She brought her brother with her, you know, and Melody looks good. All the ladies look really nice because Kimmy and Maurice, you know, they look good. All the ladies look really nice. Um, <clears throat> Jalen is there. He is doing his general manager duties. Now, listen, I looked at some other reviews, and all of the reviews were on the same page about this whole general manager situation. But you know what, Jalen? What I'm going to say to you is prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. He looked like he was on top of things. He had things moving. He had the food coming out at a timely manner. You know, he, he was professional. He looked nice. So listen, listen, the potential is there and I support it. And you know, so now Letitia pulled Melody aside and Letitia apologized to Melody and she basically repeated to Melody what Marceau had said to her. And Melody was so funny. Melody was like, well, where's this coming from? No, good and damn well it came from Marceau. Because Marceau had already talked to you. But to, but to Letitia's credit, she apologized to Melody. She said she really wants bygones to be bygones. She really wants them to move forward. She really wants them, you know, to move to a different space. And so, you know what? Fine. Listen. And like Melody said, we've been here and we've done that. I just, you know, I want to see if this is what's going to really end up happening, if we want to really move into a better space, all right? So then we have the big reveal. There was a mural that was painted on, I think it's out on, like, the patio area of Black, and it's a mural. Now, I thought, when I saw the previews, I thought it was the brothers as kids because, you know, it's Marceau, Maurice, and then they have another brother, and then they have a sister. So the picture is like four little boys or young men. I thought it was them as kids and they had taken an old picture and sort of put it on the mural. But it's their kids. Now, I, I let me say this. I thought that was sweet because Mar Marceau said something about his dad told him you can't leave a legacy unless you have a legacy. And so that represented the legacy. But it wasn't until Destiny brought up a point that made me go, huh, where were the girls? We know that Marceau has daughters. Now, I don't know, I mean, we know Maurice only has monster, but where are the girls? Now, y'all had this whole Kamala Harris moment. Y'all had this whole two, y'all had two or three conversations. Marceau, you had this whole conversation about girls being able to do whatever they want and Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris becoming vice, well, at this point, nominated to be vice president of the United, the United States. It just made you feel like that your daughters could be anything they want and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So why wouldn't the girls be included in this? Hmm. Now, Melody put the nail on the head and said, well, you know Marceau is a, is a narcissist. Uh, is, I mean, is a chauvinist. And he is. I love Marceau. You know, it's such, I, I listen, I love Marceau, but Marceau, you are such a damn chauvinist. I, I, and if there had been another mural in a different area with the girls, then I almost would have been like, oh, okay, well, the girls got their shine. But for you to have two daughters, again, what they, what kids, what kids learn is what they live. 
And what they're seeing is the boys are held at a higher value than the girls are. And that's, I think that's sad. I think that's sad. And I hope that, that that's something that they take into consideration. But anyway, moving on. Um, especially in a place like a cigar bar. Okay, let me just go on. Let me give you two seconds for this. For somebody like myself who I enjoy cigars. I go to cigar bars. I, you know, have friends and, and all that good stuff. And that is such a male-dominated area. Um, it would be really, really cool for somebody like myself to walk into a cigar bar and see myself represented. Anyway, moving on. So, then we had Marcus pull Mar Martel aside to have the conversation. And this is the conversation. Now, I know that y'all didn't agree with me, and some of y'all gave me pushback on how I felt about that whole situation with Martel, Marcus, and the Halloween party. But this was the conversation that Marcus should have had with Martel then. This is how he should have approached Martel then. And then you know what would have happened? Martel would have gotten nothing from me because we saw where, Mar where Marcus was going that at the end of the day, Martel is cool with Marcus, but Martel is not cool with Marcus's lifestyle, and he doesn't want his children around it. That's it. That's it. That's what you got from that conversation. He said, I want my kids to grow up seeing husband and wife, not husband and husband. Listen, I love you, and however you choose to live your life is cool, but that is not what I want represented in front of my children. And Marcus said, okay, well, what, what, what's the problem? Because... I ain't never been arrested. I, I, I've been a teacher for 25 years. I retired. I'm actually a minister. So what about me is so horrible that you don't want your children around? And Martel was like, I don't want my, I want my children to, that's not what I want for my kids. And so Melody walks up and Melody brings up a good point. Melody says, okay, but your kids grew up in that household. Your, your kids grew up seeing mommy, daddy, husband, wife. And you didn't give them a great representation of what that looks like. So you should be more concerned about your influence on your children and their views on marriage than that. Now, I have to give kudos that Martel was honest in his assessment because there are a lot of people that feel that way and they may or may not have said it, especially knowing that the cameras are on them. But that is how Martel felt. Now, once Melody rolled up, they never really came up with no res resolve because then Melody and Martel started arguing and Marcus was like, well, let me get the hell up out of here then. Let me exit stage left. Melody and Martel had a really good conversation and that was part of what I've been referencing at the beginning of this um, review about their marriage, the breakdown of their marriage, who was at fault, who wasn't at fault, and sort of where they are now. Um, and Martel, I think, tried to see... You know, some people might see that conversation that Martel gave at the beginning as heartfelt and, oh, my gosh, he really misses his family. Oh, my goodness, he really misses Melody. Da, da, da. No, that's no, that's not what that was. What that was, I, I think I said this last week. If not, then I'm going to say it again. What that was is someone who is used to doing bad and getting what he wants. Martel is used to coming at Melody with the heartfelt, I'm sorry, I want my family, I miss my family, I love you, I want you back. What I, you know, I, I, I screwed up, but I want to do better. And what he ran into was a melody who was done. You know, when a woman's fed up, okay? And that's what that was. You know, I, I think I told y'all the example of a really good friend of mine who went back and forth with a guy for a really long time. And I told her when she was finally done, I knew she was done because I knew she was talking differently even to me. But I told her, I said, he don't know you done. And it's going to get worse before it gets better because he's going to do what he's always done to get you back. And when it doesn't work, he's not going to know how to act, which is exactly what happened. And that's what's happening with Martel. He doesn't know what to do when everything he's always done, it doesn't work. He doesn't know what to do because he said, well, you know, I usually turn on the charm. I, I usually say the right things. I usually act right for a couple of weeks, you know, and, and I, I, I'm really, really, you know, that's, and Melody ain't here for it. And Melody told him, she said, listen, you know how long I gave you to get this right, but now you're having a baby? That's a game changer. I will never be that. 
Like I might have been a fool for a long time, but that that's a that's a bridge too far. I will never be that person. Never. Then the conversation went left because once Martel realized that he wasn't getting what he wanted, honey, the conversation went left. And then it got nasty. And Melody said, listen, what we doing? Like, you ain't even, you don't even have an attorney no more. My attorney said, you don't even have an attorney. And then Martel told her to be quiet. Um, I think that's something he may not have necessarily wanted on camera because I think the implication is either his attorney quit or he didn't pay his attorney. Because for whatever reason, that got an immediate response out of Martel. He told her to shut up. She said, oh, no, there ain't going to be no more shutting up. I'm going to say what I want to say and when I want to say it. Sign the papers so we can be done. Then he started calling her all out her name and stuff. Child, he didn't call the girl a hoe. Because she said, somehow, you can go back over there with your hoes. And he was like, well, that's what you acting like now. You one now. And she was like, oh, so now I'm a hoe. I'm a hoe because, of course, now he back on that whole, you was, you was dating, was seeing somebody. He said, you know, um, the girls told me they even heard you on the phone with him. And she was like, no, they didn't. She said, first of all, they ain't never heard me on the phone with no man. Second of all, I don't believe they told you that because this is the first I'm hearing of it. If that had been something, you would have been saying something to me about it. Like, why are you just throwing that out now? Boy, bye. I don't believe it and it ain't happened. So, Bartel ended up getting up and walking off and Melody is out there crying because, of course, that stung. You know, I mean, even though she, I don't think the, the tears were because she wants him back. I don't think there's anything like that. I think the tears were just pain. It just hurts. It just hurts, and it hurts to keep going through the same shit, you know? So, Destiny came out, and, you know, Melody talked to her and kind of let her know what happened. And then the rest of the ladies came out, and they did what they were supposed to do. They were there for her, they listened to her, they had her back, they supported her. Um, and even Letitia was like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Melody is my sister. And with everything that we've been going through, though, when, when, when shit gets hard and when they hurting... You know, you there for your sister. And I'm like, that's what your husband was trying to tell you last week when he was like, they're drowning. We're in the boat safe. You need to have some compassion for them. But okay, Letitia, however you got there, however long it took you to get there, you there now, honey. You there now, girl. Um, And that's pretty much... That is pretty much what the episode was. Like I said, that was pretty much the finale. We saw the ladies taking pictures and everything. They looked, you know, they were in a better place. Um, and that was pretty much the finale. Like I said, next week is going to be a behind-the-scenes footage type thing. I probably won't review it. I'll probably just talk about it on a live. Then to do actual, like, whole video on behind this, you know, never-before-seen footage type thing. Um, but y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Drop it in the comments, please.